Hello, internet. This is you and Spence and yes, the insight calling. The summer is over, but what kind of Eurovision will it be? Coming up, we have dates and rules for Rotterdam, the quiet success of Husevik, and lots of Eurovision on your radio. Yes, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world, whenever you're listening, welcome to USC Insights News Podcast, bringing you up to date with what's happened in the world of the Eurovision Song Contest over the summer months, the off-season at all traditionally kicks off on September the 1st. Uh, any new release after then is eligible for the contest in May the following year. But with so much up in the air this year, not just in Eurovision, but in the world pretty much everywhere, we're just going to have to play it by ear over the next weeks and months to see what kind of a contest we're going to have. I'm, you know, I'm pretty, pretty well convinced that there will be a song contest of some form come May 2021. But what it will be, that remains to be seen. Whatever it is, though, keep up to date uh, with all the details and an in-depth look at the contest, the changes, things that move on, the national finals, the artists, and more with us here at ESCinsight.com for the website. You can support us at Patreon as well. It's ESCinsight.com slash Patreon. Uh, you can support us for the price of a fancy coffee per month. We'll give you an extra article and you can support the site. And now let's catch up on all the Eurovision news since we last talked to you at the start of the summer. <laughs> I mean, I say since we last talked to you, we've had some specials in the Eurovision Again documentaries and castaways going on as well. But in terms of the news, here we go. Now, as we said there, who knows what kind of Eurovision we're going to get. Every event planner, no matter the space they're in, is looking at multiple options for events in this COVID-19 fueled era. The EBU's events team will not be any different. There will be multiple plans in place, both for Eurovision and Junior Eurovision later on this year. The final form of these contests is not going to be known until near the time. You know, there could be changes in the week or in the days running up to the contest if things become fast moving again. So whenever you read about things like the EBU has two plans, SVT is is going to change where Melody Festival is held. It would be big news if broadcasters did not have these plans in place. You always have a fallback. It's just that we very rarely hear about them. So there is the ultimate goal of having a contest. That will always be the target. How we reach there is going to be different. Don't be too worried about people going, oh, there's another plan. Things are changing. They're not. You're just hearing about them for once. We do have some confirmed details, though. Well, as much as things can be confirmed in these times. First up are the dates. Uh, Tuesday the 18th of May, Thursday the 20th of May for the two semi-finals, and Saturday the 22nd of May 2021 for the grand final. Again, Rotterdam, Ahoy Theatre so far. That's a week later than this year in the calendar, and of course the more time you have those seven days might become very important by the time we get to spring next year. There's also a rule change that's going to be in place to allow the option the option of pre-recorded backing vocals on tape for the 2021 contest. Now, up till now, the adult contest is that all vocals must be live on stage. Junior Eurovision's had uh, backing vocals on tape for a couple of years now. This is in place to offer a number of things. One is a potential cost saving for delegations. It might be to allow them to make different artistic choices, for example, more dancers in stage rather than backing singers, or to allow modern vocal production techniques heard in the charts and popular music to be heard on the Eurovision stage. As music evolves, so must the song contest. Naturally, we've got an in-depth look at this rule change back on the website, the impact on the contest, the impact on the world of music and if they want to enter the contest as well and the benefits and drawbacks of this ESCinsight.com for more on that uh, what else do we have from the EBU well the perpetual will the EBU allow Kosovo and Kazakhstan to enter Eurovision has once more been met with the uh, perpetual at the present time there are no plans tip of the hat to ESC Extra for getting this year's official form reply finally here it's worth noting that the team behind the US version of the Eurovision Song Contest picked up a lot of publicity early in August with their plans their current plans because they may change for the show in late 2021 it's smart timing coming after the netflix film release and uh, much of the press release was quoted verbatim by countless sources 
message was definitely out there. But this is not a done deal yet. The team later confirmed to the BBC that no broadcaster or other platform has yet signed up to air the US contest, but discussions were taking place. So, it's fast moving, it's not as concrete as it appears in the mainstream. We will keep you up to date on that as well. Now, uh, I think everyone who knows Eurovision has seen the Netflix film Eurovision Song Contest, The Legend of Fire Saga. And uh, all of us who are deeply ingrained in the song contest have heard from uh, friends and relatives, did you know there's a Eurovision movie? And we're like, yeah, we know. <laughs> anyway, thank you for telling us. It was really appreciated. And it looked like that perfect bit of escapist fun that the summer months needed. So, yes, there are problems. And, yes, it's uncomfortable like watching a football match uh, when you've got Pelly up front and you've got Sylvester Stallone in goal. But there we go. Uh, tradition and fun. We'll probably build on that from now. Uh, but I do want to uh, pick up um, just the, the sort of real-world impact that it's had, and especially Husevik, uh, which is the song that's sung at the end of the film. I still don't want to give out spoilers. Uh, there we go. Um, but the song itself has hit the top 20 uh, in seven countries in digital airplay alone. Iceland, Australia, New Zealand, Scotland, and the digital charts in the USA, in Canada, and the European digital charts as well. Countless weeks in the UK's Radio 2 playlist, which is probably the most stunning thing uh, of that as well. It's... Actually, no. The most stunning thing is Hosevik is now a contender for an Oscar nomination as Best Original Song. Now, it's a depleted roster of films this year. Not many is going into production. And what there is are like the summer blockbusters and don't necessarily have the sort of song that goes forward for an Oscar nomination. So in a small pool and a song that's done incredibly well financially and because some of it is in Iceland, it will probably appeal to the Academy voters. Uh, there's... Um, that nomination is not out of reach. And if that happens, anything could happen. You want one of those long shot bets just to have fun for the year? Eurovision to win an Oscar. <laughs> um, and of course, that just means um, that we'll probably have Yaya ya, Ding Dong at the um, Oscar ceremony. Yay! And still in the real world, Icelandic bands who've managed to do gigs under social distancing are reporting that audience calls to play Yaya ya, Ding Dong are on the rise. Leonard Skinner's management are presumably preparing for people to finally stop calling for Freebird. OK, let's have a look at Junior Eurovision 2020. As we mentioned there, the shape of Junior Eurovision might change quite fluid at the moment. It's being held in a TV studio rather than a large-scale venue. Uh, the date for the show is Sunday the 29th of November, and we'll keep an eye on this through the podcast as well. Uh, some news from the national final scene. Uh, Germany, this is going to be Germany's first entry to Junior Eurovision, it's being organised organized by ARD ZDF's children channel Kika. Um, it's an, going to be an internal selection, but the songs that are in the shortlist are now available uh, online. Songs from Lenia May, Malachi, David, Leroy K, and Susan got five in the running here. The 70 uh, entries submitted, the five there have been shortlisted. The casting panel uh, will now decide who gets the ticket. So it is an internal selection, but there will there is a documentary show following that process, and that's going to air on the 1st and 2nd of September. Kazakhstan may not get to go into the adult contest, but they are a fixture now at Junior Eurovision. Submissions have closed in their entry and 30 have been selected to go forward. They're in an online voting system now, which is open until August the 31st. That will choose 12 songs to go forward to a televised one-shot national final on the 26th of September. Our hosts, Poland, doing it for the second year in succession, are having a pretty big national final system here. There are three semi-finals, the 6th, the 13th, and the 20th of September, and in each of those there will be seven runners, each singing a cover song and be one qualifier from each. That grand final then uh, with the three contestants will be on the 27th of September. They'll sing two songs. One will be selected by the producers. The other one will be their potential junior Eurovision song and will have a split jury public vote to declare the winner. Over in the Netherlands, uh, the acts have been announced for their one-shot national final on Saturday the 26th of September. We've got four runners in here. Unity, a four-piece girl group band singing Best Friend. Jackie and Janae, duet singing It's You and Me. Robin, solo female singer singing Me. And T-Square, a four-piece boy band singing Count On Me. All four of those tracks are available on the JuniorSongFestival.nl website. 
Okay, Ukraine now to finish up here. Deep breath, a lot of steps in this process. Uh, and remember that these national final systems, we might see these adult contests as well. Social distancing is still going to be in place. So again, just like your vision is up in the air, but there will be something. So will national finals. Anyway, Ukraine. Submission process finished uh, as we record this podcast, uh, Tuesday the 25th. As part of that submission process, you had to put your song online. So um, all the songs are available to listen to. And there's a two-day voting window to shortlist that down. Uh, they'll be end up with eight performers with original songs, two singers who performed cover songs, and one participant whose video collected the biggest number of likes online following that uh their songs that are suitable for junior eurovision will be allocated to the singers those who submitted the original songs will have the option to use their own song uh jury and social network voting will happen between 5th and 7th of september and we'll get a winner announced on september the 12th i will catch up all of them in the news podcast when we get to september <laughs> Okay, on to the adult contest now. Uh, in terms of artists, we don't have any new names uh, for 2021, but we do know that uh, some artists will not be returning or are going to have to jump through some hoops. So Tom Lieb is not going to be returning for France. He was an internal selection last year. Uh, Croatia have said that Damir Kedzo will not be an automatic selection for next year because they will be running their song contest called Dora, uh, and that will be essentially their process to find a song for Croatia, and there's nothing to stop Kedzo entering Dora again it's a similar story in germany ben Dolik is not going to be given an automatic pass into 2021 as is the view of quite a few broadcasters germany decided that they chose the song and not the artist and the song is not allowed to come back next year ebu ruled on that one quite quickly uh, so uh ben is an artist if he has a song ready to go uh then he can enter that into the process and that will be considered in the same way as everybody else and if it's the best song and wins through Eurovision 2021. There you go. Right, let's uh, just take a little look around the countries that are going on. We'll start in uh, Australia. Uh, now, uh, on Montaigne has been invited back to represent Australia in 2021. So the announcement at their national final that Dan, Dammy M's coming back 2021. We'll wait to see if that's 2022 or not. Um, she's got a potential song. She's posted quite fruity language uh, on uh, social networks to say that she's definitely got a very very good one that's very strong uh, but uh, there's other considerations here because Australia is under an almost international lockdown very limited permissions to leave and enter the country so there's a bigger question not what's Montaigne going to sing it's how's Montaigne going to get to Rotterdam things are up in the air who knows? Uh, Bulgaria, uh, the Black Sea Eurovision Songwriting Camp is taking place this month. Uh, essentially, this is a huge workshop opportunity for songwriters and artists to work on material for the song contest. Now, these happen all the time, these songwriting camps, not just for the song contest. And again, they're not always acknowledged in public. Uh, Bulgaria, of course, just going, look, we're doing this. They're writing a song for Victoria, who is returning uh, from getting the ticket in 2020 to getting the ticket in 2021 again. Finland. Finland are running a whole national final system again. Submissions are opening on September the 1st if you have a suitable song and they will stay open for a week until September the 7th. The YLEX radio station is once more going to be working with the delegation from YLE to help in the artist selection process and that's going to bring the best of Finnish music scene to the show. Uh, much like Norway, who we'll hear in a second, that's good public broadcasting. France has mentioned we don't have Tom Lieb uh, coming back. France is actually going to be returning to a national final format. It's not the return of Destination Eurovision, but it's going to be a new show called Eurovision France, c'est vous qui décidez. Um, Eurovision France, it's you who decide. So Eurovision, you decide. Okay, fair enough. So far, all we know is that it's going to be a one-shot show uh, in prime time at some point. Uh, Israel, we got some reports coming in on the selection process so far. Nothing is confirmed apart from Eden Allen uh, returning again after getting the 2020 ticket. In that case, the artist was chosen in the song, so the artist carries forward. Uh, they're looking at a potentially submission process and whittling it down to 16 uh, and then um, eight songs, four by public, four by a panel going forward to the TV show. Um, maybe running throughout February. We'll see what happens with that one. Norway. Norway are going for a massive national final. Uh, submissions for MGP closed on August the 16th, and it looks like they're very happy with the songs. Uh, last year, the national final uh, went from a one-shot show up to six, because it was the 60th anniversary of MGP. That format looks to be staying. Um, and, and 
it, again, this is a sort of good example of public broadcasting, I think, especially in a time like this, because it's going to give a lot more artists a chance to be showcased across Norwegian television and media and have their profile raised up. And also, it's going to give a big, long six-week show that gives the country, in the words of the project manager, a common experience and a pleasant event in the middle of of the pandemic it's going to be in winter everybody's assuming that it's going to carry on because science so uh we'll keep an eye on that there'll be lots of songs coming out of norway as well uh over in sweden uh we're good that's where we're going to get our first name uh in terms of national final entrance i feel in terms of new names obviously we know the artists who are coming back uh but Sergius radio's new music show p4 nasta uh, their competitive element is coming to an end very, very soon. They've got their eight finalists for the grand final on September the 12th. Now, one of those eight will be selected to be the first name into the ring for Sweden's Melody Festival. It's not necessarily the winner. They'll choose the best one for Mel Fest going on in there. And they'll probably have to choose a new song because it all the songs have already been broadcast on P4 and it's before the September the 1st deadline Uh, but in any case as in previous years we're going to get our name for Sweden out of P4 Nasta on September the 12th Okay, so uh, what other content have we got that you might be interested in and that we would like to highlight? Well, first up, uh, we've got the podcast that we've had uh, over the summer as well. So Elaine O'Neill's Castaways, which was recorded live at Glasgow's Neparty Pal last year. And uh, our two Do You Want to Know More podcast that we've been working with with the Eurovision Again team. So if you watched uh, the uh, 1999 or the 1985 broadcasts uh, on YouTube and watched along using hashtag Eurovision Again, then don't forget to listen out. Uh, uh, to the podcast find it in the feed you'll find out more about the rules of the contest that year the national final songs that didn't make it the state of pop and more uh, eurovision again uh, runs monthly so if you're looking to fill up your diaries it's saturday september the 19th saturday october the 17th starting at 8 p.m uk 9 p.m central and uh, the year that we're going to be watching which will be hosted on the eurovision.tv youtube account will be announced 15 minutes before the show starts and yes we will have a companion podcast ready to go so you can find out more about the eurovision year after the show uh, yes, the insight continues uh, working with the team at the podcast radio. So you'll find uh, and lots of our podcasts, this news podcast and various other ones uh, from the archives, uh, digital broadcast on DAB in London, Manchester and Glasgow. And you can listen online streaming at the podcast radio dot co dot uk that's not the only place you're going to be able to find eurovision music and chat because uh, the new season of europe's heartbeat has started that's a show where i showcase uh, new music look over the charts in europe and showcase some great eurovision music as well uh, that runs out weekly now you can listen uh, radio 6 international which is radio 6.com their show debuts at 1100 gmt every saturday that's 12 noon uk 1 p.m central uh, or listen again through mix cloud at europe's heartbeat.com and look I'll, i just want to point out mixcloud has got a whole bundle of uh, long form eurovision radio shows as well mixcloud is licensed by prs and ppl so you can play the full tracks on there you have jp's radio international eurovision experience david mann's eurovision covers kieran Uri tts eurovision showcase uh, emma backfish's meanwhile in europe phil cockloff on europe podcast as well there's a whole bundle uh, of eurovision shows up there and of course you've always got ESC radio going on as well we'll put links to all of those uh, in the show notes for this podcast so you've got more options as well it's at escinsight.com well there we go uh thanks for that that's uh catching up uh with the news from over the summer uh we're probably gonna be two weeks away from the next news podcast so that will be after september the first and everything kicking off and a potential music being heard around europe for next year's song contest we've got junior eurovision coming up in november as well so yeah yeah the summer's over things are starting to heat up Stay with us for all of that and more as we go through the Eurovision years. You out there as well, stay safe, be kind, ta for now, and, um, oh, yeah, that was our 700th podcast. <coughs> Cue the guitars. The ESC Insight News podcast this week was written and hosted by Ewan Spence with help from the ESC Insight team. www.escinsight.com for more.